Had a question from someone that wanted to know, is psoriasis contagious? Well, that's a big fat no, it's not contagious. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. It's an immune problem. And there's red scaly plaques on the skin. And what's happening is there's certain parts of the skin that is replacing itself too fast within three days when it should be replacing itself within like 28 days. So there's a, a lot of uh, problems on the skin and there it could be some itchiness involved. Now to figure out what psoriasis is, uh, we need clues. So here are some of the triggers. Taking antibiotics can trigger this condition. Stress can trigger it. Having an infection, especially strep or candida. Omega-6 fatty acids, which are certain unsaturated fatty acids that are inflammatory, create inflammation of the gut. Statins, which is interesting. What do statins do? They block cholesterol. So we'll come back to that. And in the winter, there's a worsening of psoriasis. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Well, if we take a look at some other clues, steroids do help, and it's part of a treatment that a lot of doctors recommend for psoriasis. Problem is, there's side effects, right? Vitamin D creams do help, and so does UV light. Okay, what does UV light do? Well, first of all, it's a therapy directly in the skin, but also certain UV frequencies can increase vitamin D in the body. If you do a deep dive with psoriasis, um, they've isolated part of your immune system being a problem. There's an uh, excessive amount of the T helper cell 17 going on. So it's an overactive T helper 17 cell, which is producing too much of this pro-inflammatory cytokine. So basically we have this overactive immune cell that's creating this inflammation and when this cell is too high, it can trigger an autoimmune condition where your body starts to attack itself. And so I did a real huge search on what could suppress this cell, what could suppress this cytokine. And guess what came up? Vitamin D. Now, what does vitamin D have to do with that? It helps modulate or calm and control an overactive immune system. So vitamin D is very, very important in helping to minimize the side effects from autoimmune conditions. You'd have to take a bit more than usual, like 30 to 40,000 units per day. Now, the next recommendation is bile salts. Bile salts can increase the vitamin D receptor. So if there's some type of problem where you can't absorb vitamin D, bile salts can actually help you absorb it. Now, Tutka is a very specific type of bile salt because there's several. Um, this is another recommendation. In addition to regular bile salts, I would take both of those. And I would take them on an empty stomach. I would take uh, in the morning, take one, and then in the afternoon, take maybe another one, and maybe take one with meals. Taking probiotics have been shown to decrease the uh, symptoms of psoriasis as well, simply because the dysfunction originates in your gut usually from an antibiotic or an infection or something you're consuming that might have triggered it. And then another recommendation would be cod liver oil. Cod liver oil is very high in vitamin D, vitamin A, and omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. that counters the omega-6 fatty acids. And because there's a gut problem, which means there's a permeability problem, there could be a leaky gut, um, you may want to try carnivore for a while just because that might um, decrease the inflammation in your gut. Now, a couple last things I want to mention. Of course, it's worse in the winter because there's not a lot of sun, so there's, there's going to be less vitamin D. People with psoriasis need to be taking a very good amount of vitamin D. Of course, also take vitamin K2 with it. Now, what's the relationship between statins and vitamin D? Well, take a while guess what vitamin D is made from cholesterol in your skin. So the UV light hits the skin, it turns the cholesterol into a pre-vitamin D, which is then converted into an active form of vitamin D through the kidney and the liver. So taking statins can decrease your 
overall vitamin D levels. All right, there you have it. And if you want additional information on psoriasis, I did another video on it. You can check it out. I put it down below. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books it was called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.